Hello and welcome to this Construct 3 tip and trick about object indexing. This is a less well-known feature that I would like to demonstrate to you because it can be very uh, handy. So suppose we have a game and we have some text inputs on there. Let's create a text input. Now it's called text input as an object type and we have quite a few. So I will copy and paste that somewhere. This is the second one. This is the third one. And for example, the rough one. So what we'll do now is add an extra button. And add an extra text. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to enter some values in these text inputs and whenever I press OK, um, the value that's in there will be put in there. Um, but which value to take from which uh, text input can be variable. In that way, we uh, when we press the OK button, and let's make a event for that, on the clicked. Now we need to decide which text input needs to be put in there. And if I were to do text, set text, text input, dot text, well, what would happen? It picks A because it's the first one. It's the IID, the indexing ID with the zero. But suppose I don't want that. Suppose I want the second one. And let's start by making myself a little bit easier by already filling in some values here so I don't have to do the time and time again. Suppose I want to fill in the second value. What could I do? There are several possibilities. I could make an instance variable, give them all four, give them ID, then go and pick the um, text input with that instance variable in my event sheet, and then put that text in the text um, uh, object here. That would be one ID. That would be a very good idea if the uh, number of text items would change over time and you wouldn't know exactly which one is on the screen and how many are on the screen um, so that's uh, going to be a bit tricky but if this is fixed number if there are fixed number like in this case four and doesn't change uh, then you can know which iid which index id they have so index ID unfortunately is not one of the um, one of the properties you can see here at the left hand side. But if you go and debug, then you can see here that the text input there are four text inputs, and these ones here you can see it's highlighted. This is the zero iid, the one iid, the two iid, and the three iid. You can see the iid here, which is the unique in uh, the index of this object type on the canvas right now. So if I go and delete, for example, the third one, this one here, which is 2 in this case, IID2, if I go and delete that, then the one with IID3 is going to become the one with IID2. So it's variable during the game if I go and delete uh, some uh, objects some instances and stuff like that. So if you really want to reference them, you can reference them using the UID as well. If you're going to start from the assumption that the UID won't change, which is usually the case. And um, the IID is variable. But uh, if the number of objects doesn't change on your layout of that object type, the IID can also be used to reference certain object types. And you can do that using the object indexing. I could, for example, instead of doing text input to text, text input zero 
between brackets, meaning the first iid. Suppose I want the second iid, that's 1. So I'm going to run. There we have b. And so on, so I can use 2 for this one, 3 for this one. Um, and there's also a neat little trick. You can also add a negative number, for example, minus 1. And that's the last one. Let's check it out. There we have it. That's the last one. Uh, so you don't really need to know how many there are, how many uh, text inputs there are. If you just want the last one, you just take minus 1 or minus 2 or minus 3, etc. So that's object indexing for you. Um, I hope that you learned a lot. Um, as always, please like and subscribe and see you next time.